Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake K Tag, and today we're back again with the best Magic Archer deck in Clash Royale with a fast minor Wallbreaker cycle. You have three ways of applying aggression and getting chip damage with this deck. Whether it's the Magic Archer geometry, the Wallbreakers, or the Minor Fireball, there are just so many ways of getting damage and making your opponent rage. Even though this deck has some of the best offensive potential in Clash Royale, it still has incredibly solid defense. If your opponent decides to bridge spam you or drop a Golem in the back, you have nothing to fear because you have Tornado, Bomb Tower, and Valkyrie to stop any pushes. We've decided to use Fireball in this deck instead of Rocket because Magic Archer is one of the strongest decks in the entire game and I feel that you need Bar Barrel or Fireball to combat it. This is one of the best Miner Cycle decks and one of the best Magic Archer decks right now. So let's go jump straight into some games and assert some dominance. Also, if you guys are not already, you can support me in the shop by using creator code SIRTAG. By using creator code SIRTAG, it supports me by giving me a percentage of all money spent in the shop and I really appreciate it. So we're gonna go for Wall Breakers at the start of the game and we're gonna split them. So then he has to just drop cards on both sides to counter each individual Wall Breakers. That one on the left is going to connect for sure, and that's a lot of damage, baby. So we can go for Magic Archer in the back, and then we can go for a Bat Surround on top of the Baby Dragon so it doesn't get any damage on our tower here. And I think we're in a really good spot. Unfortunately, we see a Baby Dragon Battle Healer deck, so it's going to be... I would assume it's going to be Golem or Elixir Golem. If it's going to be Golem, it'll be a little bit more difficult, but Elixir Golem is so easy since we have Bomb Tower. We'll see what this man has in store for us. I want to Fireball this just so we're hopefully able to kill the Electro Dragon here. I'm not 100% sir. Okay, it does kill it. And then we get two hits off on the tower again. Oh, that was so amazing. That fireball was clean. We take those plays. So you guys might be wondering, what do you do in this situation? We have seven elixir and he cycles a night witch in the back. Well, we apply opposite lane aggression because he's probably going to ignore it. And he's just going to lose basically his entire tower there. Wow. Okay, I thought it was going to be elixir golem. This is going to be a little bit more dangerous now. I think we can still defend. We'll see if I can. We'll see if I'm uh, a wild sir or not. A tornado, so we pull everything back to keep the bomb tower alive a little bit longer. Then we kill the Night Witch bats as soon as the Night Witch pops. And I wonder if that Lumberjack is just going to take my tower if we can push it off with the Valkyrie. We should be able to push it off with the Valkyrie. All right. So despite him going all in with the one card that I was a little bit scared of was Golem at the river opposed to Elixir Golem, we were still able to defend, and we did more damage on the right-hand side than he did on the left. So I call that a win in my book. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, I'm looking at this, and I, I don't like what our hand is here because we don't have valkyrie so i'm gonna go for a minor on defense it's still a positive one interaction it's just not the interaction you really want i'm gonna go in for my wall breakers on the right hand side and i could go for a magic archer to get more chip i wonder if the bats screwed up my alignment there yeah i think they did we only get like two hits on the tower before uh, he drops something else the good thing about this is he's going to be dropping a golem ahead of uh well behind night witch so that's never a good play for him i mean he could feel good about it but it's not good we're going to go for a Valkyrie just so the uh, Bomb Tower is not going to get hit by the Electro Dragon. I think we want to go Tornado the Electro Dragon into the Death Bomb. Oh, it didn't work. I messed it up. I done goofed to Aeron. So if the Valkyrie dies, Electro Dragon could target the Magic Archer if uh, it stays alive long enough, but it doesn't. All right, we're going to go for Miner and Wallbreakers on the left, and he cycled a Baby Dragon, so we just want to go for a Valkyrie in front of our Magic Archer. And I think those both connect. Ah, no. Only one of them does. That's still a lot, though. He went in for a Tornado and Battle Healer, and still one connects. That's pretty sick. Guys, I love this deck against Elixir Golem, but it's still pretty good against Golem, too, if you haven't seen that already. It's pretty gnarly. Good stuff for us, where we can just go in for Wall Breakers again, and if he goes in for a Golem, he loses the game because it's too much Elixir. Yeah, he's probably pissed. He's dropping Electro Dragon, and one of those might connect still. It was really close. So at this point in the game, I feel like I have to go for Bomb Tower, and then I need to go for Bats. He's not able to go in for Golems, though, guys, because look at how much Elixir he has. Absolutely nothing. If he has no Elixir... He can't go in for an Aedilus cross card. And we just keep spamming him so he's never able to afford it. He's going to go for a Zap, and then he's also going to decide to go in for a Tornado as well. And if he does that, we can continuously apply more aggression to the point that he's not able to afford the Golem again. And we have double Magic Archers constantly giving us value. I love how this deck is played. Because against Golem, they can't keep up with your spam. And then they're always in this like endless cycle of inefficiently defending you until the game's over. So GG, well played, and peace out. The game is now over where I'm fireball cycling you. It was a pleasure playing against you. I think he was only able to get one or two golems down that entire game. All right, guys, we got a game against Nova Dalton. We're going to sauce out of good luck and we're going to see what's up. I definitely want to go and split wall breakers just because they're going to give me pressure on both sides. And it doesn't feel very good for him to drop something in both lanes. Well, unfortunately, he's actually going to have the Goblin Cage Brawler. It's going to go walk on the right-hand side so we can activate King Tower. If he's going to have Graveyard, it'd be great. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case, but we could activate King Tower with this balloon probably. So we'll see if we can make that happen. With Bomb Tower Tornado, I think that we are able to activate King Tower without any damage taken on our towers. 
Yeah, what a great start. Man, he ignored an entire miner, and then he decided to go and drop a balloon with the Goblin Cage Brawler tanking. We're able to just assert dominance with that King Tower activation super early on. I love starting like that, man. Gets me fired up. I think that in this situation, he's probably not going to have a big spell, but he could. Just balloon decks don't run that very often. They're going to have like Musketeer, Miner, Fast Cycle. Wow, he's going to have Lightning. <laughs> have to eat my own words here, boys. Anyway, we can go in for Wall Breakers. He's probably going to drop like a Zap or something on that. We'll wait and see. If he doesn't, we can just go in for um, Bats, Miner here, and then Valkyrie on the other side so we can go and pull. And then hopefully the Valkyrie still walks in the same lane as the Goblin Cage Brawler. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. But the Bats are going to get so much damage on it that it doesn't even matter. Man, this is hysterical. This is going so well for me. The one thing I have to be a little bit worried about is dropping this Magic Archer and not having enough Elixir to defend against the Bridge Pim right after. But I don't think he's going to be back to Goblin Cage because our cycle is faster than him. So we'll see what he does here. I don't think he has an answer for this. I could be wrong. Oh, he has arrows. Okay, Lightning Arrows makes sense. And then he drops Mega Minion. That's so much Elixir. Wow. Six Elixir, dude. Just for the Wall Breaker's Magic Archer. And the Magic Archer already gave us value, right? Magic Archer was able to kill minions. So, minions. Mega Minion. And then also dropping the arrows. <laughs> Nine Elixir, dude. For a simple five. That's insane to me. So, we want to go for a Valkyrie here. And then we want to go and stockpile some stuff. So, we already know that dropping Bomb Tower is going to be our first play that we want to do. And... I want to go in for wall breakers, as weird as that sounds. We want to go for bats, and then we want to get a spicy tornado if we can. Actually, I, I could fireball everything, or I could tornado. It doesn't really matter here. The death bomb is going to kill it, so I'd rather go in for a tornado opposed to dropping a fireball, because it's less elixir, right? So at this point, I think that we just go in for minor bats, and then have him arrow that potentially, because we know that the wall breakers would just get arrowed, but the bats are going to give us so much damage, and then the wall breakers would go straight towards the goblin cage brawler, so... Now we have wall breakers. We got him into a bad card cycle. We can go for wall breakers on the other side. He probably just straight up ignores it. Could have also dropped it further back. I think that might have been slightly better. Yeah, dropping it further back so then I make it a huge push here would have been slightly better in my opinion. But Valkyrie is going to give us a lot of damage. He might be able to just straight up kill this. We'll see. I can go in for a magic archer again and stack a couple of them. And now we have so many magic archers on the field. I don't even know what this guy does. So the better play is cycling the magic archer and then having the wall breakers further back so it doesn't immediately go into his crap. So then we can make a big push. Even if he arrows it, then we can go in for bats, and I don't think he has anything for that. And you know what we can do? We can cycle a whole bunch of magic archers and just meme here, because the uh, goblin cage brawler is just going to simply die, and then we can go tornado everything so the magic archers kill it. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you. Even if you have a goblin cage and you have guards, you're not going to be able to defend against us, and it is so incredibly easy to defend against Lava Hound with this stack. I thought it was going to be a standard balloon deck at the start, but man, he surprised me with the arrows. Let's go for wall breakers here. We're going to see what's up. We're going to see what's good. This guy is going to have to defend both sides right now. Oh, never mind. Just doesn't defend either side and goes in for a golem. So what I want to do is I want to go for a Valkyrie and bats. Because you have to defend this. And if you drop Lumberjack, it just dies. If you drop Night Witch, it just dies. Dude, you're just going to sack the entire tower right now. So we dropped 8 Elixir. Can we defend, guys? With an 8 Elixir deficit and single Elixir. Can we defend this push? If we can, then we can defend anything. So what I want to do is I want to go and wait. Drop my tornado, pull everything back into alignment with the magic archer. Can the bomb work a miracle here? If we're able to go in for like a minor and distract, we should be able to win this game. Yeah, so down eight elixir, still able to defend, dude. So if you guys are sick and tired of golem players that just don't defend, this guy was the epitome of that. He's like, homie, I'm not defending my entire tower against a Valkyrie bats after you split wall breakers. You know what? I don't care. I have bomb tower. I line everything up with my magic archer and you lose the game. Like... <laughs> I hate no skill people that do that, man. Eight elixir down and still able to defend easily. Feels so good. This deck is crazy. I like the limit testing with this deck, realizing my capabilities. Now you guys know if you have Bomb Tower and you have Magic Archer, you can defend against any Nightwish spam. It doesn't matter at all. So we can go in for another Magic Archer here. He's going to spam us again. Well, we have Bats, and he's probably going to go for like a Lightning or something because he's not dropping anything. Or maybe he just decides to let this tower go. Okay, so yeah, he's going to go for a lightning. And then we can tornado it all into the death bomb and then drop our Valkyrie afterwards. So all the bats are going to die because the golem explodes and then our tower targets the closest possible thing. And obviously the closest possible thing there were the bats, not the elixir or not the golemites, right? So uh, it's not going to retarget onto the golemites after. So the golemites were back here. 
and that's where I'm fun. Okay, so we can go in for a minor on defense just so that doesn't connect. And remember, he's probably going to cycle lightnings on us, so we want to go and cycle a magic archer and just get ready to cycle back to another. So I'm totally okay with this. I can also fireball, so we'll see if he gets down anything else that we want to fireball here. A little bit scared of getting lightning, but I know that the magic archer is going to die anyway and we need to cycle back to something, so. We're okay if we just tornado all of his spam into us and then drop a fireball on all this junk. Because the Night Witch is just going to die to the fireball here with the magic archer and it's not really going to matter. This game is ours. With 19 seconds remaining, there's no way he gets a lightning through. I had, well, like three lightnings through, you know? Like, he can get one, but it's not going to take our tower, right? It's kind of Mimi. So he's just going to bridge spam like a total champion. You guys already know when uh, it doesn't work uh, with Golem at the start, like, and ignoring everything, you just spam mini Pekkas and baby dragons at the river, and that's equally as skillful. It was such a pleasure asserting dominance over this Golem bridge spammer that ignored absolutely everything at the start of the game and then proceeded to spam the entire right-hand side, not caring about defending at all. I actually don't think defense was in this guy's vocabulary. All right, guys, let's go and cycle bats in the back and see what's up. This man is not cycling anything, and then he goes in for a battle ram, so hopefully he doesn't magic archer me here. If he does, I think we have to tornado it away so it doesn't also connect to our tower. And then we're Valkyrie will be able to kill it a little bit quicker too. Hmm. So it's going to be P.E.K.K.A. So standard P.E.K.K.A. probably with Magic Archer. That's what I would expect at least. So this is one of those matchups that if we play it correctly, we should be able to win. But I don't know if we'll play it perfectly. We have to play really, really well. So his P.E.K.K.A.s do not go towards our tower. We're going to go in for a very high bomb tower. So both towers are going to be able to kill the P.E.K.K.A. And then we Magic Archer in the middle. So then we have the perfect separation. So the Magic Archer... Oh, wow, it gets fireballed instead of poisoned. Wow, that's that's really not good. I was going to say, so then it stays alive, and then we have counter push potential, but we just don't now. I don't know what this deck is anymore. Battle Ram with Fireball and P.E.K.K.A. I guess he just subbed out the... You know what? He must have lost to too many Magic Archers. He must have lost to our deck a couple too many times. He's like, yep, never going to happen again. I don't want to lose to this deck. We're going to go and sauce in... Wow, he has Log as well. He's got Log Fireball. Huh. I guess the Log is a little bit better for us than him having Zap. So we take one thing... And we lose another, right? So, I can probably just go for a Magic Archer here. Yes, he's going to get a hit off on our tower. I kind of just have to be okay with it. It's going to Fireball, but that's going to be a dead Rogue Ghost. It doesn't get a second hit. Otherwise, it would have if I hadn't dropped that Magic Archer. And he's got Disperse Damage. Remember, he does have... Yeah, he's only got Electro Wizard for this, these bats. So, I could Fireball it. Oh, he's just going to Pekka, and he's going to eat the rest of the damage. Okay, that's also pretty good. Ooh... Minions, then he's going to spam me really aggressively. You have to go for a high bomb tower. So it's able to pull everything. He's got minions, so he doesn't have Magic Archer, interestingly enough. I think we have to go for a Valkyrie here. Don't know if he's going to do anything else. Remember, he's only going to have Electro Wizard here. So we can just go pull back the P.E.K.K.A. for a little bit. So then, he's hopefully just going to die. Go for Miner, Bats, and then Magic Archer when he Electros. Doesn't drop it in the spot that we want. Does not drop it in the spot that we want. He's going to Fireball at the river just because he doesn't want to take any chip damage there. So well played on his end. Go for Wallbreakers again at the river. I think that the P.E.K.K.A. is going to be able to kill one of them, but not both. Bro Ghost, though. Okay, we can Mire. I don't think the P.E.K.K.A. goes back. Remember, he only has... Yeah, he doesn't have Zap. He's only got Log. So that should be able to kill Battle Rim without any other support. I don't have to spend any extra Elixir here. The good thing about our deck is despite him having Fireball, we get value from our Magic Archer because we outcycle his Fireball with our deck. So now we're back to Magic Archer, and he doesn't have Fireball. So this is what we wanted, right? If he drops anything down the middle, that is. The Fireball here. We'll get the Magic Archer getting some hits. Okay, so we can eat this damage. I could just go in for Bats here, and because he's at such a low Elixir count, I don't think he's able to do anything because he's dropped Pekka at the river, right? If we Tornado it all back, and just get away with the Magic Archer. This should be a dead P.E.K.K.A. It should not get a hit on our tower. Oh, it does get one. That's fine. We can Battle Ram here so everything connects really high up. So then the Bandit is just going to die near the river. And the Barbarians have a long distance to walk back. We can go for a Miner in the back. And then he's probably going to go in for either a P.E.K.K.A. or Electro Wizard. P.E.K.K.A. is... We need one more hit. And then we Fireball and we win the game. GG, well played. And peace out, Girl Scout. That was a much more difficult matchup because he's got Fireball for our Magic Archer, but it still didn't matter. With Poison, our Magic Archer stay alive a lot longer. We're going to go for Bats here. We're going to see what's up. We're going to see what's good. We're going to go in for Miner plus Bats because we have the Bats on defense to offense. Definitely worth it. 
And he's going to go for a Night Witch. Let's go, baby. Let's get another Elixir Golem player. I'm so ready for this. Oh my gosh, he's spamming right into me. Right into the face of adversity. This dude does not care at all. So we can go Tornado everything back so then the Night Witch bats pop and they all die and he doesn't get any damage from that. And I'm in a really good situation because the Elixir Golem blobs are about to die before they even reach my tower. Then we can go in for a Valkyrie in front, go in for bats and Miner here as well. Then I can just wait with my wall breakers because I think this might do enough damage or I can just fireball everything. I'm wondering about fireballing this. If we go and hit the Lector Dragon a little bit further away and then we're able to shoot it. Oh, I thought that the Lector Dragon and the tower would both get shot there, but did not happen. So we're going to just go for another match, Garchar on defense. And you know, this is the easier matchup, guys. This is the one we wanted to face. When we play against Electric Dragon, Elixir Golem, and we have Bomb Tower with Magic Archer Valkyrie, we have too many ways of killing his cards. And yes, he can get counter pushed way more efficiently with Elixir Golem, but it's always going to die to the Bomb Tower to give us more Elixir in the end of the things. The main thing is I can't be down too much Elixir because I just could lose if I'm down, let's like, say, like six Elixir and I spam too hard into like a Night Witch. Say I went for like a Miner and Wall Breakers and he defends with the Night Witch, that could kind of be bad for me. So I don't want to do that if we're around even elixir and donate a solid five elixir to him. So I'm gonna go for a bomb tower here. And since we have Valkyrie, there's really no way for him to break through this. It's gonna be pretty fun. Also the death bomb targets air units, if you guys did not know. So that's really, really good. So we can go and tornado everything into us. If he's gonna go lightning, do a spicy tornado like that, and then use magic archer so we can activate king tower. So that's gonna be great. Uh, yeah, dude, that's, that's just too good. He's literally done. He's just over. Whenever we're able to do that, when we have Bomb Tower, Tornado, yeah, I think he's just going to give up after that one, Chief. There's no point in playing this game out. <laughs> that was so good, man. That is a feels-good moment. Destroying an Elixir Golem player, crippling their mental to the point that they just leave the game because they know anything else is hopeless. GG, well played, and peace out. He had two options. Let me three-crown him or just drag it out and have no possibility of winning.